Coming to you from the Strings and Things studio in Ventura, California, I'm Karen. I'm Katie. I'm Anne. And this is the Strings Unraveled Book Club. Hello. How so. is everybody? Oh, I put that out into the universe like the people listening, but also both of you. How yeah. are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am great because I love October. Yep. If, if this is this news. Is, you know, I think about you all month because I'm <laughs> like, this is her happy month. This is, is the best. This is her Christmas month. It was also month. a nice cozy yeah. day today. It was. Yeah. I had a grilled cheese sandwich from um, Starbucks. Oh, nice. Uh, I really wanted ramen, but that was too far. <laughs> My short lunch break. But that was like so perfect. Grilled cheese sandwich. We're having grilled cheese latte. and tomato soup tomorrow oh, for dinner, and I'm nice. very excited. So this was funny because we had grilled cheese on Tuesday. Oh. And okay, so get this. I didn't use regular bread. I used Hawaiian sweet rolls, oh, but yeah. but they're set, but they're like they're lo- they're bigger version, mm-hmm. not for me because they're not gluten free. And I used like five different cheeses. Mm-hmm. And I melted butter and put that in the bottom of the pan and then flipped them over and added, I put more butter on and flipped them over. Can they I tell so you, good. um, sorry, Anne has something to say. Go it's ahead. Okay. Okay. I'll just say mayonnaise. Skip the butter. Mayonnaise yeah, your bread. Yeah, I've heard that. It's really... I've also heard... Even if you're a mayo hater, you, it's yes, not, you don't know it. Because I have yeah. mayo haters in my family and it's the, it's so good. I was watching, I think it was Binging with Babish and he was making some sort of grilled sandwich of some sort. And he only toasts one side of the bread, and you put the crispy side down to the inside so that it's soft on your the oh roof of your gosh. mouth and it doesn't hurt. How but have also, I never you seen get the that? crunchy part of a sandwich. And I was like, that is very I am smart. a total princess about crunchy sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> because the roof of my mouth is yeah. sensitive. So you toast one side, so. and then you like get it nice and grilled and buttery, oh and then you mild your sandwich. Oh, see, but I cooked it on a lower temperature. So, and I put a cover on it well, also, so that the, so that the cheese, cause we had like half an inch of cheese. <laughs> we got five different kinds of cheeses in there and I wanted the, them to have time to get milk. Okay. So this was the you test. You made a fondue. It basically was. So my youngest, uh, was pulled it apart and kept slowly pulling and pulling and pulling. It literally was two and a half feet wow. apart before the cheese broke. Do you know what the stretchiest cheese is for a grilled cheese? I watched a YouTube video where they like tested all these cheeses, which one's the best, and Munster has the most pull. Oh, so well, if you want real stretchy, you add some Munster to your grilled cheese. We had. I wonder if that snap too, because it's so stretchy. Yeah, maybe. Like the te- would there be a texture um, benefit to mm. the Munster? I can tell you though it. Okay, with that though, we opted not to do tomato tomato soup. It was a, it was a grilled cheese because. Half of us don't really care for tomato soup. Now, if it had been roasted, if it had been roast, homemade tomato soup, oh, for dinner if tomorrow. it had been roasted red pepper with like my like I've made it roast with homemade with red pepper and and fresh tomatoes that I cooked down. I'm sure. That was awesome, Good. but everyone was just in a chicken and wild rice mood. <laughs> that sounds yummy. Like that sounds very. It yummy. wasn't as great, but it's not as fun to dip your sandwich into. No. And I will tell you, the gluten free bread that I had. I was just like looking at it like this really sucks because <laughs> that Hawaiian sweet bread looked amazing. Cause I mean, the, you know how thick those rolls are, yeah. Yeah. but it's all soft and squishy. Uh, it was... That's not going to be as hard on your mouth is one thing I wanted to say. We yeah. use potato bread for ours. <laughs> so Dante has been a, he somehow, I don't know how he is the best sandwich griller. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. And I think that he, Contrary to most things this 14-year-old does, he pays attention to them mm. and flips them carefully. Nice. Uh, so tuna melts have become... Oh, I love tuna melt nice. Yeah. Uh, so I've tried this new cookbook called Prep and Rally. I have not really used it the way it's intended, which is you <laughs> prep on like Sunday and then you have four meals ready to go with minimal cooking on each of the weeknights. But finding time to prep is also challenging. <laughs> So, yeah, prepping is, ch- is sucky. It always takes way longer than they tell. Right. Whatever recipe you're following. Triple it or something. They, they, they're they totally lying to you when they say prep takes five minutes. My eye, even if I bought it already pre-cut. Opening some, the container. Opening the container is going to take me. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to take five minutes. But, you know, prep takes way longer. Yeah. They, I, they're, they're living in a t- land where time stops. <laughs> but the thing I like is each of the recipes so oh, far. Uh, yeah, is, yeah. 
is stand ups on its own. Mm. It's everything we've made that we've actually followed through. What making. is this site? It's called. It's a cookbook called Prep and Rally. Oh. Um, everything has been really good. So things as simple as which I have never done as a cook: roasting a chicken. Mm. Mm. Which we roasted two chickens. Why not? Your oven's Same already time, going. Right? Yeah. And then one chicken you set aside for another Bonus recipe. Chicken. It was amazing. My um, mom in the pandemic picked up the skill of um, homemade sourdough bread making. Ooh, yes. So she is currently baking a loaf of sourdough for tomorrow night's dinner, which is grilled cheese and tomato soup. But going back to the bread, like, what do you use for your grilled... Welcome to our grilled cheese podcast. Um, <laughs> that is the name of our book club. You, what bread do you use for your grilled cheese? My dad says that you have to put your jaw in turbo mode to eat these sandwiches because it's about the crustiest sandwich. It's like eating oh, croutons, but, it, but it's so good. I mean, my princess mouth would be behind it. But yeah. when it yeah. has a really nice chew, like sourdough yeah. does, yes. it's different. It's yes. just getting through it without, like, cutting the roof of your yes. mouth. But what if... Yeah. Okay, so she's making it homemade. What if you cut it thicker so that it still has squish in it? No, you still well, get the, the squish. Crust, it's just the crust that you have to crust. get through. Oh, yeah. I love the that. edge. When I got my Starbucks um, grilled cheese today, I thought about how I wish they had cut it down the middle. Mm. <laughs> you gotta cut it grilled cheese diagonally. Well, I mean, just in two pieces, oh, so it could go into the soft part. Not I the understand. Crust. They didn't cut yours. No, no, they just pull it out of the oven. Yeah. They're not going to cut and it in half And then I was you. like... The first time I ordered I that... I first, have had it cut in half. It depends yeah. on the person. Sometimes they cut it. So then I was thinking, okay, Anne, They cut the gonna... cheese. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Anne, you're going to put in your notes, please cut my cheese my cheese sandwich in half. Can you cut my sandwich in half, please, diagonally <laughs> then, or into stars? And then... And, you... and get the crust off. Right. That's exactly. I'm like, what are you going to do next, princess? Ask for the crust off. This Maybe. Is all, this is all in my head. No, I would never ask for the crust <laughs> off my sandwich. What a waste. I can't, we believe, love we, the crust. I can't believe we spent eight minutes talking about grilled cheese. <laughs> but I'm it's not I can believe I'm not I can believe. done yet. So in this cookbook, in this cookbook, she has a bunch of like um what's the thing you put in there and it homogenizes it like a little blender? An oh, immersion yeah. blender. It, it, thank you. Immersion. I it have, is a little blender. I have one of those. It's okay, awesome. so she has a bunch of like veggie soups that throw in these vegetables oh, that yeah. my picky eaters at home would never eat. But you put in the immer- do the immersion blender and it's all homogenous and delicious. Yeah. Um it was a butternut squash yep. soup with roasted to- or petite tomatoes mm-hmm. and then whatever else went mm-hmm. into it delicious so good Mm. such an upgrade on tomato soup because you got the like tomatoiness yeah but the um there's a natural sweetness to the butternut yeah and also there was like a hearty more hearty um Mm -hmm. even though it was liquefied almost like a stew feel a little bit like not as hearty as that but just a little more body to the soup and i'm like dante why aren't you making this on grilled cheese or on on tuna melt night he's like you want me to make tuna melts and this yes <laughs> yeah you're supposed to make soup and sandwich it's not we don't just... usually we only it's usually sandwich he usually uh. makes us each two sandwiches which is like glutton 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 then when we go to a restaurant when it's on the menu mm-hmm. he's like you can cheat on me mom <laughs> maybe <laughs> i'm thinking about it yeah <laughs> All right. So anyway, what did we read? <laughs> <laughs> Prep and rally. It was cookbook. Dang, it's I appropriate. T- yeah, 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 yeah. I could totally talk about. We could have food, a food but podcast. that's a whole other yeah. thing. I like uh, food. Oh yes. I read so. something recently that she, the my reason we love cheese so much is that it actually creates like, and this might be complete BS. It creates some kind of like like opium type um oh, reaction yes. in our bodies when um I've heard this when it meets our stomach acid mm. and I want to know more about that. Yeah, I don't it's... know about that. For some of us who are I love cheese but I'm kind of lactose intolerant so oh. I have to I have to just spread it out. Like Can you believe there are people in this world that just don't like cheese? No. My I don't want to know those people. Oh, he doesn't like it. Well, Does he have a reaction like to it or something? No, he doesn't like cheese or anything creamy. <laughs> <laughs> But he's weird in a lot I'm of ways. Are you, so. sure, are you sure he's your brother? He's not, not, he wasn't just like he switched is, at birth or something? He is uh, an interesting individual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not a texture eater so much. There are certainly textures I don't love, but I think that might be a texture thing. I think it is, but yeah. It's true. Okay, what, we really what, need to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're 11 minutes in almost. <laughs> okay. Karen, what did we read this month? It was your pick. <laughs> we read... We I made us read a book. Made we us. could not do... There's no audio 
Audible, although there is an online cheat that I don't know if either of you saw. No, I didn't. Oh, good. I didn't, I didn't investigate. Good. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't good, really good. need it. Good, good, good. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we did a graphic novel this month. Um, I wanted us to have a different kind of reading experience where it's not just words that you hear or see, text that you see, but there's, some of the storytelling is done with the pictures of a graphic novel. And we, we read Lore Olympus, um, Volume 1, by Rachel Smith, or Smythe. There's a Y in there. You can do it um, as you want. It started as, a, it's a, rom okay, so Lore Olympus is a romantic web comic created by Rachel Smythe and published by the web comic platform line Webtoon. This is a modern retelling of the Greek myth concerning the relationship between the god of the underworld, Hades, and the goddess of spring, Persephone. And um, that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell, but it also kind of explores, it gives you a lot of these other characters, and it's kind of a modern retelling. I equate it to Greek mythology meets sex in the city. <laughs> Not that I've seen that. I probably shouldn't say it because I haven't <laughs> actually watched that much. I have a feeling it, that's right. I also have not really watched Sex in the City. It's what I. It's what my brain perceives Sex in the City it's to be. It's a contemporary re uh, yeah. retelling. I it's suppose. a contemporary retelling, and the reason why um, I just did. Want, I, I I took a little bit of notes on this. Um, by the way, if you like this story, I found after I purchased it and finished reading it that because it's on Webtoon, which has its own app. You actually can read the rest of the story for free. Awesome. Because I book, do want the rest. This book covers um, episodes 1 through 25, but there are currently 206 episodes. So the story goes on. <laughs> you know, being, it's it's a nice, like, book that I purchased. I think I bought it on Amazon and it was like $11 or something. I got the hardcover just because that was what came up first. I yeah. didn't know there was a soft cover. Yeah. And it was 17 or something. Yeah, it, the the price on the cover <laughs> says 19.99, but I think I paid like 11 or 12 dollars, which I thought was a really great deal because it's a beautiful book. Well, yeah, I paid 19.99 because I bought it from um, a local bookstore up in Sa Santa Barbara, so I got to support a small bookstore yep. place, and I like to do that. Um, probably should have looked at Timber Books, but sometimes Timber Books. Oh, I have something to say. So I was on the train going to see, going to, into downtown LA to go see a show and somebody for, who works at Timber Books got off in LA just like I did. Aww. And I knew that because his hat, I was, we were getting off and I'm like, his hat said Timber Books. So I'm like, you're coming from Ventura. I love that place. They just sell their hats though. He might not have worked he there. He actually works there. Oh, nice. She struck up conversation. As we were walking off, so it was a very, very short, like, oh, I saw you. Great. That's great. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all it was. Um, uh, so uh, Timber Books will order anything for you. Just that's true. Just a note, too. Sometimes I'm not patient enough for Timber Books to order something. But it's very fast. it is good to know. <laughs> not as fast as Amazon. Uh, which, so, which probably be struck hold on. by lightning. Keep talking while I pull <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Keep talking while I pull up my download because I have a download for. So why don't you have? There it is. Can you talk about why you picked this one or how you came to know about this? Okay. Graphic novel. So when I was at, I'm trying to think of the name of the place. It's a, it's a, I'll find it. It's a it's a independent bookstore up in. Santa, northern part of Santa Barbara, close to, close to, to Galita, in the same shopping center as Gelson's. Okay. Um, I can picture exactly where that is. Yeah, you can picture where it is. And I, I had the, I uh, until five the center, minutes ago, right? I had I'm the name on in my Google head. to triangulate where that is. Okay. <laughs> Keep Just do in bookstore. In, okay. So I went and I was already up in Santa Barbara for something else. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go over there before I head home because I would like to look for and get information from the people because it's one of those bookstores where people actually know books. Chaucer's <laughs> books. Chaucer's, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I've heard of them. So, um, super helpful. And I told them what I was planning, that I wanted to, that we have this book club, and I wanted to find a graphic novel that <laughs> wasn't heavily sci-fi fantasy inspired or horror inspired because I wanted it to appeal to more of our, to the broader range of listeners. And you know, it's kind of hard to find those because, mm. because most of them are more sci-fi. Um, or horror in, um, based. So they gave me two, a couple choices and one is kind of sci-fi dystopian that one was 1984 and we chose and, and then this Lore Olympus which has some romance it's Greek tragedy and I love that. 
Um, and I thought, okay, sure. I, I, I got both of them. We, we, I kind of put it before you guys to kind of say, which would you prefer? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we go for the romance. Um, I love a good Greek tragedy. I love the story of Hades and Persephone having loved Hades town, but knowing that this is not like that, but it's still that classic, um, tale of all the vices of humanity. It could be like that. Because, like, the whole, like, crux of Hades Town is remember when you were, like, a fresh, new, love, lovely yeah. couple. And this, is like, the part we're exposed to is those first the blushes. Yeah. yeah. Plus all the... All the... Other drama. Other drama. Because if Greek mythology is about anything, it is about drama. Yeah. And it intensified because there are gods and, gods and goddesses that don't really have any consequences. So right. they can be full-on dramas. Yep. Uh, drama llamas. Um, anyway, so um, I do have some universal book discussion questions, but I did find some that has a little section of questions about graphic novels because um, there's some other, first of all, opinions, feelings. I love the aesthetic of the book. Yeah. I, I love that every frame of it is like a beautiful art painting. Mm -hmm. um, I thought all of it was, was really <clears throat> beautifully done. I love the like, color coding of the god yep. that made it easy to track um because it does get confusing yeah <laughs> who um, is who that generally made it easier um yeah i, I enjoyed it. it it was a quick read too yeah i read it the first time in an afternoon um i took it as my like weekend getaway book mm -hmm. and quickly realized that i needed a backup a because book. i was like oh this is done <laughs> um there is less text because there's a whole lot of pictures. Yeah. Right. right. Um, I am not a graphic novel reader, but I, so getting into like the swing of how it works and, and all that, you know, and it helped. Uh, I was talking with somebody who is more of a reader than I, and she was like, yeah, I usually have to read graphic novels twice to make sure I get most yeah. out of it. So I spent a good chunk of my time this morning and then an hour before we started our meeting, like re- introducing myself to it so it could be fresh but also I did feel like I caught more or understood more the second time I worked my way through it and it's not a small book yeah. right it's like a it's a it's a big it, chunk it, of a book good old, good old inch thick um but yeah it's a it's a very quick uh peruse so I enjoyed it I thought it was fun um I like the story I like the artwork especially I think it's pretty beautiful mm -hmm. and I love the like the color scheme um, it did help that there were color coded gods because I was like everybody almost looks very similar. You but did not. I, I'm like right. I was like wait a minute. It's true. Are they Hades or because some of the guys all look the same? At first, I I'm was like, really confused. Really and I was confused. Like, I need to slow down here. No, I put little put little markers. Like wait a minute. I don't know who we're talking about now. <laughs> we were we were rich in the middle of this story, and I I equate it to watching a soap opera. Because oh, you feel like you go likes. through so yeah. many episodes not really getting anywhere. And then all of a sudden they pop up with this other storyline. And you're like, wait a minute. There what? are a couple sort of like side quest storylines yeah. in there too. So. But, so without the color coding, I would have been, I still didn't quite, I actually had to look up the characters on the wiki. There's a wiki for them and you can, and I'm like, okay, I'm not seeing who's who for, because in my brain, I was looking at the artwork like, it's just the lighting is different. They maybe they are all the same person, but oh. the lighting is different. So I couldn't quite. Some of it I love the artwork, but part of me is like when there's modern art, my brain can't always interpret what it's supposed to be. So it's like they change the lighting. Is this a different person or not? So I really enjoyed it. I do want to read more, mm -hmm. but I do feel like I went through this thing and I don't. We didn't get very far in the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot to discuss story wise and like, because I there's not that much story that happens. But yeah. It's kind of the, it lays kind of, I think these first 25 chapters start to lay the groundwork. You meet Zeus, you meet Hera, you meet um, Artemis. Um, and they're, and, and I really like and, the take on Hera. Yeah. Because yeah. usually Hera is like a mean, jealous, power hungry character. Yes. This one, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how she pans out, because she seems nice. Yeah, she <laughs> seems like a good friend to other women. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's interesting, what's really fun about this one is there is a bonus chapter in the back that, because the what happens is these are, like, 
like comics, they're you get little bites of the story in small doses. And so when they publish this as a volume, they're just taking all of the compilation and putting them together. But there is the very last one. It says, the author says, I originally wrote this chapter to be episode 10 of Lore Olympus. However, after discussion with my editor at the time, we decided that the first Hera focused chapter shouldn't be about Hades, which is fair. The, the spot should be filled with an episode where Persades and Hades go for a drive, which suited the narrative better at that time. It meant that Hera wasn't defined by her relationship with Hades. Ultimately, the chapter I had written for Hera didn't fit naturally into the flow of the story and ended up in the story beat graveyard. So with this publication, I'm glad to have the opportunity to share this moment. And if on the website, this story, this this little mini chapter is somewhere else. It's not part of the 1 through 26, 25. So you get a bonus 26, but it's not like 20. I, I didn't it's look, not in the timeline. It's not in right. this particular yeah. timeline. So it's kind of like you get a little yeah, a bonus like thing. Nice. Um, so it's kind of, what's interesting is, so I, I downloaded the Webtoon app. And surprisingly, it is really easy to scroll and use mm-hmm. because you're just like, it's for each frame of the story. You don't have to, your eyes don't have to dart around the page to find where to go next. It takes you're just you to scrolling the next frame. up. Yep. Yep. You're just scrolling up and here's the next part of the dialogue, the next picture. And the artwork is just as clean and fresh mm-hmm. and bright as in the book. The artwork, I will say it was really beautiful. You go from these blues to pinks um, and yeah, the color coding is helpful. Some of it I thought was really dark, um, darkly lit, but it could also be that some of this I was reading like in the wee hours of the morning. So <laughs> my be. eyes yeah. might, and I was not in a brightly, you know, It also wasn't place. necessarily made for physical Yeah, that's why print. I'm thinking digital, because I'm sure yeah. this was digitally done artwork. Right. So. It is true. If you look at the pictures on, the, if you read this on the website or online, that that is brighter and it it, something there is something about how some things translate different in in paper right um my brother makes fun of me if i buy comics because he like exclusively he's a big comic reader and he exclusively reads them digitally he's like why would you buy that well because i like to hold the book yeah why not (laughs) And I did... or support my local comic book store. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And there is something I will say. Normally, I'm a, a digital audio where I, I can engage in something while I'm doing this, and so this made me stop whatever else I was doing and just focus on the story and the book in my hand. And I appreciated. I could. Um, part of me wanted to zip through it a little faster, um, but I was. I always find. I always feel compelled to look at all the photos because to me there's some the artist put something in that picture it must have importance it may or may not um i get distracted by the photo by the pictures it's (laughs) also better for your brain to look at a piece of paper than it is to stare at a screen yes yeah we do plenty of that all day right yeah i i enjoy i like i try to on the ones i choose i try to encourage myself to hold the book yeah (laughs) so Mm -hmm. i appreciated more of that Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so I do have some questions that are specific to graphic novels. Um, I have a question. How do the images and text work together to communicate the story? What did, oh, I should come back and say, I like the artwork, the context of the story. I was a little disappointed, but I think it's because I had a different expect because the flow of it was harder for my brain to focus through. Um, I think it was more of a me thing because I, when I was reading through 1984, everything is linear and more on a grid pattern and it's easier for my brain to follow the story. I felt a couple places where I was, I had to, I couldn't just read through and get the story. I had to stop and go and research and look like, I don't, this way having the wiki was helpful to me because I felt a couple places where I didn't, when they jumped from, also I'll come back up for a moment. I'm still new to reading graphic novels. So the nat, what we think of a, ch- I think of a break as um, a chapter, but the break between com each comic or episode is different. It's not the same as just changing a chapter and continuing with the story. The flow is different than with a graphic novel than it is with, um, I think sometimes they lay the layout of the story 
is different and may be like, like you said, they go to a different chapter or a different comic and it's kind of a different storyline or story arc within the well, broad story. Because hypothetically, each of those isn't what you would consider an issue, even though she's calling them episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're basically, yeah. So each one should have like its own little story arc mm-hmm. with, contained in it. Which I thought was medium as far as that was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I felt like we got part of the story and then it stopped. And maybe that is be also because it originally was, it, unlike other graphic novels that are intended for print, this was a web, a webisode. These were webisodes so, or can... webtoons. So they, I think maybe the format is different than what I'm accustomed to. This feels more like a compendium. Yeah. yeah. Which is the, you know, compilation of many, many issues. It's still good. Yeah, but just like, um, what is that, what is the, the Tolkien, the, the, the uh, Lord of the Rings related, the, is it the Cimmerillion? Sim, yeah. Sim, okay, yeah, I could never yeah. read through that either, because that whole compilation mm. thing, I just, it's like, I, en- I enjoy that's, stories. That's like dr- reading that's a dictionary. An encyclopedia. encyclopedia. Yeah, that's an encyclopedia. So of compilations the world. don't always flow in my brain. That's fair. I get this little disconnect and it throws me off, but I kept going through it because I wanted to just say, I finished on time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sorry. Going back to that, with that question How do the images and text work together to communicate the story? How did you feel about that? Well, I think the images prop up the text a lot. Like, yeah, like this is much more of a visual story than a textual story. To me. Yeah, I was um, reading on uh, Wikipedia about the story of um, Psyche. And because mm. um, there's that whole aside in this book about Eros and Psyche mm-hmm. and their relationship. And I was like sort of skimming through the Wikipedia article on it. And I was like, oh, I would like to read this story in its full capacity. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there's not time. I mean, we've only read the first small portion of this. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's not time to get the whole hashing of whatever it is that happened. So I was sort of like wishing for more, but also we've only scratched the surface of this, yeah. of this world. I think that the, her presentation very much, and to the reader's credit, like assumes a high level of knowledge. Right. Which I don't necessarily like... have of Greek mythology. Right. <laughs> right. Well, and so that's exciting in a sense. Yeah. That it like encouraged you to build mm-hmm. on Yeah. Cause now I'm like, oh, I'd like to learn more about that or, yeah. you know, well, and if you go to the, I, I believe I, I, in our, in our group communication, I did put the link to the, the week, the wiki for this because the other way, the other, it lays out the different, you can go by episode of, you can follow episode and it gives you like a little synapse of each episode and more of psyche story. These like, it's almost like you get a little taste of the different characters mm. in this first volume. Yeah. But you could look ahead, but you can look ahead and get more of their story. Right. Um, and I do, I thought, okay, so I mean, part of me is it's not, so we got this volume one and there's clearly more volumes, but, um, I was like, oh, okay. And on the website, it's season one and season two. Well, there's, I guess volume one is only part of a season. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) So there's a lot more to, I'm so used to reading a story and And having completion. And having completion. So I think we all agree that where it ended was a little unsatisfying. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was. I was like, when's it going to get good? Yeah. (laughs) I know. I felt like, oh, okay, we just got all the little teaser tasters, but we never, it's like, it's like getting, uh, spending a whole two and a half hours of a movie only watching previews. It's Dune. It's the first movie of Dune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Which I love. There better be a second one. Oh, it's planned. Yeah. It's planned. I think uh, it's being uh, shot. Yeah. yeah it's, I will uh, lose my mind if that doesn't finish. I'm so Because it's one frustrated. of my favorite uh, okay. novels, one of my favorite yep. worlds. Anyway. We're in agreement. Okay. Question. Could this story be as meaningful if it was not written in a graphic novel format? And considering Absolutely. this was not... A graphic novel. Sometimes you get graphic novels that are adapted from other books, but this was purely graphic novel based on his. Well, okay, it's based yeah. on the historical myths, but heavily, heavily editorialized with her image of of her interpretation. Thank you, right. her representation. Of I think that was sort of what I was getting at. Is that like I would have preferred to read this story than to access this story via 
a graphic novel, I think. And I liked it, you know, because I liked the, the imagery of it. And I'm not opposed to graphic novels, but now I'm like, I want to know more. More Cersei style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if, personally, what? I would have preferred to read this story as a narrative So all novel. the space that was used with artwork could have had a little more text. Could but have that's given a you completely more story. different but thing. That's yeah, that's format. not her. No. That's not this artist. No. That's yeah. not what it's... Thing. Okay. Because, it, you know, it's interesting with comic book as a genre uh -huh. or a art form. Like, it's always been interesting to me that the writer and the artist can be so separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then collaborate to come together for whatever right. they make up. So this she's she's a special talent in that she has a ability, storytelling ability verbally and Did um, she do visually. the graphic? Did she do the visuals also? It doesn't. It only has one author. That's right. Yeah. Because you're right. Because all the other ones we've done says written by or by this person, illustrated by. Mm -hmm. That's usually a. You're right. And a lot of comic books are illustrated by multiple different artists. That's too. true. Too. That's true. Each yep. each episode or issue can have different artists. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you have one person that oversees to make sure there's a continuity between them. Pardon me, but um, kind of like in mm -hmm. animation, sort mm -hmm. of. Depending on what machine you're working in, but for right. a, but for a book that's supposed to be the story of Hades and Persephone, I feel like I got very little of either. Yeah, <laughs> they were just sort of they're introduced and then they're kind of in the background and people were talking kind of around them, but but that's okay because there's more. I I now have a free source. I I was like, do I want to buy volume two? I don't know if I want to spend this on volume two and have a whole collection, but fortunately, I don't need to. Yeah, that's um, nice. Okay, so. Some of these questions, considering, I mean, let's see, how, if at all, so they the, the graphic novel discussion questions recognizes that you have a lot of space <laughs> and it, not necessarily progression. How, if at all, do the characters in the novel change throughout the text? What does the author do to show these changes? Oh, that's a good question for this one. Because I love, like, her hair. There's yeah. some magic oh, yeah. in her hair, right? Yeah. She, it's in her way. She cuts it off. It's long again a minute later. <laughs> yeah, it's tied to her emotional state. Yeah. That, okay, I, it wasn't just me. I kind of no. thought so. Like, I, so. I was reading this. She gets upset this, and boom, her hair grows. Yeah, it was like when she, I guess this is a thing um, that this artist or author like made as part of her because i was i googled it because i wanted to know if that was a thing that was true about persephone or just this artist's rendition of her and it's just this artist okay sort of interpretation is that when she is stressed it manifests through her hair growth okay. but also flower crowns can appear on her head when she is like happy or something okay so that there's oh. those two sort of things and I, that's what made me google like is this a real thing or not I mean I'm, I'm, yeah a true myth you know what i mean yeah is this something from her canon? is this from the well, source material or not <laughs> and if you think she's the goddess of spring her emotions would tie to what growth uh, although the growth is more of a stressor but yeah um, i think in the small taste of the story that we got the point is that she's going to grow from a naive young girl who's just entering the city and and doesn't know anything about about you know living in this mm -hmm. world because she was raised in the mortal more mortal realm right mm -hmm. so i think the whole point is that she's going to like learn to use her power and to you know i could see the direction that we're going we didn't right. make it there no. but i could see the path that we've started well, i wonder does she ever get agency though like yeah. when um eros takes her shopping yeah and he's like this is what you're gonna have Wow, talk about a f control right. freak. But I want to choose. Well, I'm paying. Yeah. And he doesn't even have any, like, he's not, <laughs> he prevented her from agency with nothing to gain. Because mm -hmm. he's not in it to take anything No, from he her. was just like, I can, I can do whatever I want. And yeah. she's like, okay. I feel like he's a person who always wants to gain power over others. And maybe that's why he is the god of war, you know, is about gaining, Eros, isn't Eros the god of war? That's no, Aries. That's Aries. Oh, that's Aries. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What is Eros? The it's like it's part of his mother's area. So, er oh. like Ari Eros is like erotic love. Oh, okay. I think. Okay. If I remember my ancient Greek, well, yeah, he was. So... He, he got pulled out of organizing an orgy to yeah, go yeah, help yeah. his mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's erotic. So maybe that's where sometimes in some situations I don't know personally. I've only. I'm only gaining my knowledge from whatever I watch on television programs. <laughs> so, you know, take that with a grain of a huge chunk of salt. Because his character, 
was so controlling. It was all about power. I mean, didn't he, before he even was connecting with, I got really worried for her when he's like helping himself to her room. <laughs> I'm like, those are two different and people. That's, see, I yeah. so, see so, this um, is where I got confused. Over. I so, was, got, who Eros went? is the one who I also falls. thought it was Eros when the selfie appears. Yes. Yeah. No, but that's, it's not. that's it's, okay. Um, it's Artemis's brother. Right. It's Apollo. Apollo. Yeah. Oh, Apollo, Apollo the, and um, what's it? Hermes show up. Yes. After they go shopping with Eros, yeah. and Eros tells him his story about how he falls in love with um, Psyche. Psyche. Oh, okay. And then. Yeah, her brother, Artemis's brother, shows up with Hermes. Oh, that's right, that's right. So, Hermes, what a scoundrel. So do you I love think, Hermes. Okay, so, so, Apollo, whatever whatever version of, of Greek mythology, Apollo and her Hades are absolutely hate each other for, you know. And do you think that Apollo only really wanted to get in with her because... Hades was interested, was into her. I don't know yet. Don't know yet. Don't know yet. It's we just, don't know why. Just throwing, that, just throwing that out there. He, maybe he's just for, into date rape. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Clearly. I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, that could just like be his thing. It was upsetting. <laughs> yeah. It was very upsetting. Okay. Yeah. There were certain parts where something was coming out of one god's eyes into hers. Were they trying to control her? Was yeah. that That was Apollo. I think he, he was trying to influence her with his... The influential Mind powers, it. I suppose. <laughs> his, uh, his, his sunny yeah. iris. So, <laughs> I think that was a way for them. Oh, baby. <laughs> to uh, to uh, demonstrate that he is trying to use his power over her. But he didn't. It didn't really work on her, right? She didn't well, really I mean, get it, mesmerized. I mean, it did, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's like. Well, I mean, it did because they he did rape her. Well. But he, but not. She that was t- enamored of his attention. Yes, which is what but he I got his foot in the door. Yeah, but she wasn't into him that no. whole time. No, no. It's not like he showed up and she was like, "Oh, I like this guy." No, he was like, "Oh, hey, he's she's cute. I want to get with her." Yeah, and then he sort of like comes to her in the kitchen when she cuts her he hand, and he sort of forces his way into helping her when yeah. she like he he gives her. His coat, and she's like, "Hey, stop that! I don't want that." Yeah, and he's like, "No, no, no! I want to help you." And she's yeah. like, "I don't, I don't want you to help me." Yep. But he sort of forces his way in into helping her. That's all psyche. Yeah. I, yeah. So, okay, so was psyche? Who was psyche with? Eros, Eros tells a flashback of his time with psyche when he's confessing what his mom has over him. Okay, so what is it about like when she? Because there's one person that looks like. She wants to leave and she's being forced to stay there. Yeah, that's that's Psyche. And why okay. can't Psyche read? I mean... Because she's an uneducated Greek woman. Okay. Because she's mortal. Yeah. She's just oh, a young, beautiful mortal. woman who is valued for her young, beautiful looks. Mm-hmm. You should be happy with what we got you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, I did like it's to- always upsetting that, like, these very old ideas about women uh-huh. and women and men's relationship to each other hold true through modern telling. Right? Yeah. You're like, oh, I can relate to this ancient yeah. mythology. When women were chattel. You right. Know? Um, at least we are currently free of that public idea. Mostly. I, and yeah. that is something that I thought she real the the author really brought that through is this power of that that men try to exert over women mm-hmm. to the that they don't see them as a what's the word um it's the these equal, chapters having yeah. agency having yeah, agency the yeah things that valuable are in my head mm-hmm. these chapters are called a wolf in the hen house. Yeah. And oh, that's what when they first show up, they come to their apartment and uh, Persephone says, I thought we didn't allow men in the house. And she says, Persephone, come on, he's my brother. So it's like, she knows, like, this this is supposed to be a safe place for us, so why mm-hmm. are we letting him in? Mm-hmm. Because Artemis doesn't realize that her brother's a, such a bad dude. She doesn't love him. No, because like, look, you know, look, look how angry she was about how overprotective she was about her friend when she was around Hades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Hades is like, I didn't do squat. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I get that. It's almost like he has a reputation 
that is put upon him by other people. And they're having breakfast in a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was thinking yeah. about that. I'm like, what is the economics of Mount Olympus? Right. <laughs> that there's like a strip club economy. Oh, yeah. Here's this one. <laughs> this is my favorite um, illustration is when Eros shows up to be like, I'm sorry I put you in, in Hades' car. And he shows up at the door, and it's, men are forbidden in this house. <laughs> and it's like, well, I thought, and then later on, she's like, I thought men were forbidden here. And she's like, no, no, it's my brother. It's fine. But see, because she doesn't see what he is, because right. she's got blinders, because he's her well, brother. most rapist and molesters are people you know. Yeah. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Oh, isn't that great? Yeah. So, oh, okay. You're right. It was the, the wolf in the hen house. Okay. So I, I, you can, I don't know that the characters have a chance to change because there's really not too much early. room. It's too early. Yeah. I think, I think. How if, much are they going to evolve? Because these are definitely archetypes. True. Like these are the archetypes. True. <laughs> yeah. Like but I don't know how much more they're going to change and evolve. Maybe our main girl. Yeah. Yeah. I think all the, and Hades, I'm assuming, right? Like, he's going to fall in love. Yeah. Where yeah. I guess we get more of a sense of his... I think his story probably changes the most because we know about him and his nymph, whose name I can't remember, that's sort of like his, like, go-to hookup, right? And <laughs> yeah. nobody yeah. likes her and he doesn't even like her that much. He was going to ask her to marry <laughs> He's like, she'll be an okay god of or yeah. goddess of the underworld right, right. to being like, no, I'm in love with this other girl. I mean, it, he doesn't say that specifically, no. but yeah. you can infer that that's where it's happening. But it seems like a pretty significant difference in well, him his... and his brothers can see that too, yeah. right? They're like, well, what about this lady? I mean, we hate her, but... I... Go ahead. Did y'all feel a little creeped out? Like, okay, wait a minute. He is so significantly older than this girl. Yeah, because but everybody's but, eternal. Yeah, everybody's eternal. exactly. Like, she's That's new true. eternal, but not... Right. You yeah. know? She could be she, 105 already. Right. Oh, remind yeah. me, who is her mother? Um, Demeter. Demeter. Okay, so we have not actually met Demeter yet. Yeah. We've just we seen... We did in a flashback right. of her memory. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. When they when she locks her in the greenhouse. Yes. And her mother's a whole lot of... Whole lot of was she wrong? Mess wrong. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's just not going to teach her how to how to use her powers. Okay. How would this story change if you covered the pictures and only read the text? I wouldn't like it. <laughs> no, it needs the pictures. I mean, the text, because there's not a lot of text there. Yeah. There'd be a lot of holes. I mean, yes. you don't, I mean, so many of the pictures are just expressions on people's faces where you see, you know. You wouldn't get a whole lot out of it. Like, there's it a wasn't. whole page there that was just one word um, <laughs> by the back. Well, in the spirit of um, R.I.P. Angela Lansbury, <clears throat> um, I, when I was a kid, my parents would watch uh, Murder, She Wrote after I went to bed. So I have heard every one of those episodes. Ooh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like that. It's It would be, if we only had the text of this book, it would be like watching, it, listening to a TV show from another room. Yeah, exactly. Like, you would get a sense of it. It might even be entertaining. But you're um, missing facial expressions, yeah. which are really key to telling 80%. the story. But you're getting that. Missing. You're also missing that when you read a regular book. But mm. there is the prose of right of who did this and who said that and who felt this. And, yeah, you know, it's. I mean, when when this you're missing no- out on the graphic novel, this particular graphic novel, some of them it is pretty much all dialogue. Yeah. Whereas there are some like when I was reading 1984, it has pages that that disc- that are story. <laughs> written exposition trip. exposition yeah, that's dante's new favorite Thank word you. he learned <laughs> it in freshman english there you go um <clears throat> so so we talked about so that i think that answers the question of how do we think the pictures helped you visualize the characters well the color coding helped mm-hmm. i still got confused but maybe when i read more i'll get a better sense because yeah, i'm sure you'll get used to it i will say they were so scantily clad, but they are gods and goddesses, and they're not known yeah. for modesty. It's artfully done, too. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I, I had the, like, it's not, it's like, um, the, it's some children's anthology of Greek mythology that was like a big book like this, and it touched on every Greek myth, and 
Like, this is the only way I can imagine the gods. Just, like, running around. Mostly naked. Yeah. I mean, this was far less um, graphic than all of the ancient sculptures and art of any god. They were all naked except for, like, a tiny little piece of fabric that maybe covered a boob. I mean, look, look, David. Like you, <laughs> His the parts most, right out there. The yeah. most like graphic thing that you see in this, I think, is a butt. Yeah. Oh yeah, but and she actually, has but underwear. She's, on. She has yeah. underwear, and it's actually a very pretty butt. <laughs> yeah, it's a nicely like, shaped butt. It's not butt. that scan- scandalous compared to most other Greek well, mythology. I think one the most is, illicit thing is which? the panty removal. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one I, one of my favorite parts that I liked was. The the male god that was that was totally like oh I love this fur coat I want it <laughs> I was like I love that part. yeah um okay so uh, interesting why do you think some of the panels are different sizes in the book uh to give volume to the message being communicated like the picture Katie shared that's the full yeah page. emphasis yeah. Mm-hmm. So size matters <laughs> as far as the story. And there are some pages that don't have the white border, that they are all dark with only the boxes of picture being like, the, I feel like even the int- attention to the borders of the page and the background of the page in this um, was very key. There are some, a lot of, a lot of the pages have a white border around the boxes and everything. And you get a sense of the dialogue is just, simple um people having conversation and then with the scenes where it's moody you get a sense of foreboding or danger um or even like like the or mystery like when you i didn't really get the full size of cerberus until she scales back and you see the size of cerberus to to um, persephone yeah <laughs> i love that she could tame cerberus Who's a yeah. good pooch? <laughs> um, and the nasty little yippy dog. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Watch out, she bites. Uh, the fact that he has seven dogs and he's named them all. He's a dog lover. I mean, who knew? It, I, I wanted to think, I don't think all of that is part of Greek mythology. All, all the different dogs. But why wouldn't Yeah, probably he, not. But why wouldn't he have, have lots of dogs? Why only have Cerberus? Um, now, wasn't Cerberus supposed to be a two-headed dog? I have no idea. And You're was, asking the wrong person. Yeah, I'm not sure. It so. didn't seem quite correct, the characterization, but it's very good. Yeah. Anyway. It's good. It's fine. Artistic yeah. license. Okay. Um, Not a lot to say about the book other than, as far as, I mean, there's other general questions that we could ask. Did you guys have anything else you want to discuss about it? I mean, it's... Other than I know that I will be going to, um, let me see if I can find that, the, the website. Um, it's just loreolympus.fandom.com backslash wiki backslash lore underscore Olympus. Or you can even, if you go to <laughs> fandom.com, you can look up lore Olympus. Um, I, it's nice. You can look them up by episode. Um, let me see. They have you can explore various parts of it. I like that they break down the characters by goddesses, gods, nymphs, titans, primordial deities, mortals, and pets. That's, that's so, I mean, so that's what really under characters it really helped me go. Wait a minute, who's who? I mean, okay, I know Hera's yellow, but I kind of got mixed up between. And I knew Artemis has it almost goth feel to her. I kind of like her a lot. <laughs> Um, oh, and I think Hades, uh, girl on the side, side piece is a, it was a nymph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's the universe. You can click on the universe and it'll tell you what locations, what species, what groups, um, you, they've got the behind the scenes about the team or I mean, merchandise and the author itself, but the episodes are really nice because I guess there's some pilot episodes before all of this where they, um, but I like when they break, you can break it down. It's broken down by season one or season two. But like I said, if you go and the website doesn't even have all of the episodes that later on, there's an app. It's a free app, um, Webtoon, and they have more than just this graphic novel. They have a lot of different graphic novels that are free, completely free. And um, I will definitely be exploring this more because mm. I feel like 
as a standalone book. I know it's volume one, but like we've we we've read other books in a series, and you don't have you don't you're it's like you're left wanting more of the story, but you still have a sense of I actually ate something mm-hmm. rather than I ate air. Yeah, <laughs> and I want right. more, I want a little bit more than um, than air. It kind of reminds me of in the movie with. Robin Williams about Peter Pan. What's it called? Just hook. Um, hook. in yeah. the movie Hook. Remember how it looks like they're eating, but they're not really. You can't see yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. I feel like until he believes. Until he believes. So by the end, and when I started exploring it, I'm more of a believer. But when I first was reading it, I was like eating air. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, re- I do like the story. I love the artwork. I, it is an adult. It did, there's some adult themes in here. There's mm-hmm. not something you're going to give to your kids. Um, I don't know. <clears> actually, <throat> I really thought about that because I was remembering the one that I mean, I if guess, you're going to let your kids learn about Greek mythology. Yeah, it's not a bad way to go. Well, I mean, you might want to I mean, give them something else first, but yeah. like Greek mythology is full of sex. Right. The mm-hmm. end. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I think there was just that one scene that really made me super uncomfortable and yeah, super. I think it dirty. was supposed to. It was meant to because it's not something you ever be comfortable with. Well, my daughter called me today upset that there's a boy who's touching people. Oh. Which it could just be rumor. I said, mm. did you see this? Do you know people it's happened to? That's a whole nother set of things of like, right. mm-hmm. you know, see something, say something. But uh, so I don't know. I think that she's 11. Like. This could open some important there was no conversations. Nudity. There's, there's no nudity. Yeah. And I think it's as the... Li- li- hmm? Lascivious? Lascivious. Lasc- thank you. As any Greek mythology. Right. True. Like, True. like the book I Except remember as a kid. Except that you're reading it and not seeing it. Like, there's no, a difference. I mean, had, well, I mean, okay, there's no there's... illustrations of gods taking panties away, but... Like, there's the stories of Zeus getting it on with right. everyone on right. Earth. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's better to let them imagine that or to Versus show Versus showing that. I don't know. But the there was no is, sex act show. <laughs> no. I mean, there's, there's, they're, in a, they're in a strip club. But, True. I mean, but the strip club, one of them was a mermaid in the tank. I mean, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. That's, I don't think it's any worse than, like, a, any sitcoms. No, I don't think so. No, I I would rate it like a PG thirteen. Yes, if you're gonna let your kid watch a PG thirteen, that's what uh, the PG is. I mean, I don't have children, but a PG thirteen movie, then I would let them read this book too. Yeah, Yeah. if they're old enough to understand those. But there are uncomfortable things in this book, and they are meant to make you uncomfortable. Right, but like you said, it it brings it brings up opportunities for discussion. Mm Because there, it's not gra- for a graphic novel. It's not graphic mm-hmm. th- in yeah. that in that in, right. a, yeah, in that way. Um, anyway, so okay yeah. then. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad. Yeah, I, it was I a fun it. change of pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did we read? It makes me go back and want to reread my or actually start reading my Walking Dead. That is an effort. <laughs> it's like that's an embark. You're embarking on a thing, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth I have- it. I have multiple books. I started yeah. collecting them. I just haven't read anything beyond I the first one. I have read the first two compendiums, but that's where I break off from all of it. Like, once Negan does what Negan does. Oh, I'm, I'm not that far. Yeah. yeah. I'm out. I so left what, the show. I left the book, the comic book. So um, what else have you read this one? All right. So you put me in a graphic m- novel mood. Um, partly because when I went to Barnes and Noble hoping it was there and I wouldn't have to wait because yeah. I am also impatient. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't there. <laughs> I picked up pumpkin heads, which I had seen Ooh. around mm. at bookstores and specifically what Barnes and Noble. It's so cute. It's this boy and girl on their last night of they're like seniors in high school and they're getting ready to go off to college. It's their last night working in the pumpkin patch they've worked at for four or five years. Okay. And the boy is like the um most valuable employee every month and she, she's oh, it looks cute oh it's a it, rainbow rowl i like yeah. her well i like i now i like her too okay <laughs> so yes rainbow rowl artist is faith aaron hicks and it's them going through the pumpkin patch trying to meet this girl that the boy has never talked to and it's so cute it gave me like because i worked at um Magic Mountain as a 16 year old you grew up me, in um, a similar well, that you had right. to of course it's your active passage <laughs> but it gave me like total Six Flags vibes yeah. um, 
That sounds cute. And it was very, very good. It was really sweet. And the art is fantastic, which that's Faith Aaron Hicks. Um, and I would read more from Rainbow Rowell. What have you read that she, you like from her? Um, has a whole series of, I can't remember the first, I've only read the first, but she's got a whole series of books about like a fan, um, I think it's called Fangirl. Um, oh, and, yeah, I think Fangirl. I've seen that. Yeah. And it's sort of based on a almost like, I think Harry Potter ish, like, uh, she's a fan of this, like, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of whatever. Thing. Yeah. But then she actually writes those stories too, mm-hmm. so that you can read, like, the fa- I think I read Fangirl, but then you could also, like, di- dive deeper into that series. Mm-hmm. But she has another one called. She wrote her source material. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um,. Oh, I can't remember. Eleanor in Park, I think, is her oh, most like that popular that one. Yeah, but I think I just read Fangirl. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then Dante got this book out of the library at school, and he just left it around. And I got up kind of early on Saturday morning, and it was quiet. And I picked it up, and I started looking at it. It was, and I read it like in an hour and a half. Uh-huh. American born Chinese. It's award winning. I didn't pay attention to what award, but it had one of those raised gold seals. Uh And um, I think it came out in 2007 by Jean Lewin Yang. And it's very good. Mm. It's like these three, there's three storylines going all at the same time that you move through. I guess you could say chapter by chapter. (coughs) And they all come together to be intertwined in the end. And it's beautifully woven together. Um, I recommend checking it out. I don't, I actually don't want to tell you what it's about. It's just this like preteen teenage boy and his coming of age or coming to understand his role in society, I guess. Okay. It's very good. Karen? Um, well, I finished a book by Tochi Onyebuchi called War Girls and it's set in Nigeria in like in the future but not that far in the future like 2060 or something like that um and it's it's set in of course africa and a lot of people who might have had medical disabilities are cyberized but there's this war between um nigeria and a neighboring area um and there's it starts with the they're being bombed but there's a there's a warrior um they're like they're kind of their own little village. They're trying to stay under the radar, so kind of um, and protect their own people. Mm-hmm. And there's a girl, and you find out through the story that she's Nigerian. That she was part of, like casualty. Of, her parents and her family was a casualty of war, and she was pulled in and taken care of by um, Onyi, which is which this name of the character who becomes her big sister kind of person but a lot of, because she was young and and she's not fully enhanced like some of these other people have it, it um are enhanced but um and then i started the, and so that was war girls and then i just started the sequel called rebel sisters um and there's a there's a point where they're together and then they're not together and then in rebel sisters you get this continuation of, of what they happen and what happens to Oni as you know she she you know she almost dies or in in theory she dies but part of her is put into you know they they have this way of saving going through and because different people don't have brains they have brain cases right you know, <laughs> the, the the skeleton is called a brain case the skull is called a brain case and even though you might be dead a lot of your memories for haven't until they as time goes, it gets degraded mm-hmm. as the, the the organic material dies down. But a lot of that is still stored, and they try to at least there's different organ a different organization that tries to go through and salvage that so that they can give those memories to the families as they find them. Um, there's a lot of refugees and back and forth, and it's kind of a continuation of their story, and that's called Rebel Sisters, um, and the it's narrated by. Nikiki Obi, I, I'm not even going to try to say it because I don't want to say it bad, but the narration is really, really good. Um, 
Again, that was by Tochi Onyebuchi. I just started The Memory Librarian by Janelle Monet. And you have seen her mm-hmm. as an actress. Oh, I love her. First thing. Yeah. yeah, she's and amazing. It's she narrated by it's everything nar- about her. Listen, mm-hmm. it's narrated by her and Bonnie Turpin. Ah, fantastic. Uh, is it Bonnie? Bonnie. Whatever. I don't know. Because it's B-A-H-N-I. So I, I know what they call her Bonnie, but I don't know if that's just the It American, could be that simple. Ang- anglicized. Um, and boy, so good. I love listening to Janelle Monet. Her voice has this velvety quality that I just want to just listen. And, yeah, she's incredible. Yes. Yeah. I so, bought her rock opera a long time ago. So the memory I librarian I, is, so the rock opera, is she an, is she an author about something else? She's this a musician. This is a two-part, <clears throat> it was like a two-album rock opera of like a, a cyborg. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up while you're talking Yeah, she's about like this. musician, author, actress, and completely talented in all aspects. In everything. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> she's, um, she's so cool. She has a great cool. yoga song, too. She's <laughs> so cool. Yeah. She, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So I just <laughs> finished a book called um, America Goddamn by Treva B. Lindsay. Um, wow. It is. It's a really hard book to get through. But in, you can tell there was, it was really hard for her to write and hard for her to narrate. There's places where... Because the author is also the audible narrator, and there's places where she stumbles over her words a few times, and they don't. I appreciate they didn't edit that out. That's good. She may repeat a section a few times to get through. It's it's a. It, let me. Uh, I've got. The, I did get the. Even though I got the audible, I did get the um, the paper version, the hardback version. It's about violence, black women, and the struggle for justice. But each chapter takes a different aspect. And it's, and it's really, really well researched. And she mentions another book that I thought, okay, I want to get this other book. She mentions another book in her book called American uh, Medical Apartheid, The Dark Mm -hmm. History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. Um, And to the present is also scary because we're talking Nazi camp level bad stuff happening right here. And it's been happening. And I mean... From the uterus collector that got caught, um, you guys heard about the just a year ago. No. Oh yeah, there's there was a um, a medical doctor in in um, in immigration intake camp in Georgia. I think he was in Georgia. This was just and a new, the, the, one of the nurses there was a whistleblower, and they made it very hard for her. Um, it's he was working under the Trump administration. It's only been the last year that they finally caught up with him and they're finally listening. Forty percent of the women coming to him <laughs> were having unnecessary hysterectomies with without their permission or knowledge. And before well, eugenics is back, and then you and then deported, back sent back to their countries before they could before if they filed a complaint against him, um, they were quickly pushed out pushed back out and and so the and the whistleblower was a nurse who just couldn't she looked into it this is this is this kind of stuff is still happening it's just scary um yeah so it's not going to be an easy read i just um but i got this book because it was mentioned uh, but it's just really the america goddamn g-o-d-d-a-m is really really well resourced um just talking about the different um when she talks about this the medical system um she talk, she refers to it as the medical industrial complex and how th- this from um even from the way doctors are trained in medical school to the way they, the po- policies are operated the way certain th- medical procedures are put in place be, by the privatization um, whether it be of prisons or whatever, there's profits to be made, and they're often at the expense of black and brown bodies. So um, that's, I mean, it's heavy stuff, but besides the le- the sci-fi futuristic or lighter stuff, like, it's kind of nice to read this romance. But there's times where you that's just That's why have... we went with this and not 1984. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's times where it, it is, it's an important read, but you have to give yourself time to process because... And the amount of of work and labor and emotional 
weight that that the author and narrator <laughs> went through is anyway. On a different note, that really yeah. cool rock opera from <laughs> Janelle Monet is yeah. the Arc Android. Oh, uh, cool. Let's see. I'm looking for the. It's part of her concept album series, so it's the second of three pieces. Um, I knew it was like multiple layers. Um, the other, <clears throat> it's her Metropolis concept album series, and it's amazing. Metropolis, the Chase Suite, the Arc Android, and the Electric Lady, and they're amazing. Nice. Um, I read five books this month. Holy cow! I know, right? <laughs> Hold on to your wigs. Okay. Um, the first one I read was by one of my favorites, Jasmine Guillory. Um, I read By the Book, which is part of the sort of, um, collection of romance novels inspired by Disney oh, movies. this was the Belle one, right? Yes. Yeah, so this was the Beauty and the Beast oh. retelling. Um, I read... If the Shoe Fits, which was the Cinderella one. This is the Beauty and the Beast one. It was fine. Um, I like Jasmine Guillory. I like the way she writes. The I mean, you knew exactly what was going to happen because if you, you know the story, you know the story, <laughs> right? But it was it was cute. I liked it. It wasn't her most, you know, it wasn't her best work, but um, it was very cute. Um, and then I was introduced to a new um, author who I loved, um, Emily Henry. And if you read in this um, sort of genre of like mm, contemporary romance novels, you know Emily Henry. And when I wanted to start reading hers, her two most popular are Beach Read and oh uh, something about books. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. Neither of those two were available at the time for me to borrow to like listen to. So I read her most. Re I bought um, her most recent one. When I went on my weekend getaway and I needed another book, I went to a bookstore and I picked up People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. <laughs> oh, kind of appropriate. <laughs> um, which I loved. Um, it was it was really, really good. Um, I read a lot of modern, you know, contemporary romance novels and I really, really liked hers. Um, somebody who also enjoys um, this genre who I, you know, get a lot of recommendations from. She said that she finds her delightful and that like her similes are very like she's she's so good at like uh, like creating these fun similes that I also agreed with was like it's she it's pretty delightful. She was very, <laughs> very good. Um, and then while I was looking for other Emily Henry books, one that I could get for free from Cloud Library or Hoopla or whatever was Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallero and Emily Henry. Um, which I sort of equated to like a teenage version of like Thelma and Louise. Oh, fun. So it's two teenage girls who want to like run away from their lives and get away from the bad things that are happening to them. And, um, I really, really liked it. Um, they don't drive off the end of They don't, they, they do steal a car, but they do not drive off a cliff. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> no unaliving here. Excellent. No. Um, it's, and it's not necessarily like young adult fiction mm -hmm. because there are some like heavier things about it but I like, I like young adult fiction <laughs> oh I do too I'm not saying anything bad about it <laughs> not at all um but it's hello the girls most popular genre <laughs> right current. yeah um I I very much enjoyed and then I read by Casey McQuiston who is an author that I loved her other book I read which was one last stop this is red white and royal blue Okay. Which, if you're a modern contemporary romance novel reader, you've seen this one before. At least recommended to you. I loved it. Um, that one is about um, a... It's sort of like uh, what's uh, like Prince... Um, what's the younger prince's name? Henry. Her, her, no. Harry, Henry. yes. Henry. His name is Henry in the book. But like <laughs> oh. the younger prince of England falling in love with the son of the president of the United States. Um, and it was very cute and I really, really enjoyed it. That's I thought it was cool really take. well done. And I loved her first um, book that I read so much that I was excited to read this one. And she has a new one out that I haven't read yet that I'm excited about because mm -hmm. I enjoyed both of the others so much. Um, 
So I would give that like a like a 10 out of 10. I really liked nice. it. And then the last one I just finished is Boyfriend Material by Alexia Hall or Alexis Hall. I can't remember. Um, and that one was fine. Um, it's um, a British novel. It takes place in London. Um, it's about Red, White, and Royal Blue is like a queer romance. And then after I finished that, this one came up as recommended. So it's also a queer romance. And it's like a young man who's father is like a famous rock star and so he's also sort of in the public eye and he needs to get like a reputable boyfriend so that he can like you know up his reputation <laughs> so it's image. following in love with a, a barrister which i guess oh. is the english version of like a like a district attorney yeah. yeah um but that one was it was good i liked it there's a I started the sequel, which is husband material, which I don't know if I'm necessarily going to finish because it's, it's not as good. Um, also, it's like, it's a continuation of the same story, right? So the first book, you're like, oh, they're going to fall in love. Then they fall in love. And now this one takes place well, two years later. Work. And it's like, they live together. They've been boyfriends for two years. But now they're like sort of having a like a difficulty in their marriage. I'm like, I just got you guys together, no. and now you're gonna be arguing yeah. again. Like, I'm not in the mood for this. Maybe you should wait as long <laughs> as it took for those two to come out apart. Right. <laughs> so two years later or whatever, I can like revisit husband material, which yeah. I don't think I'm going to. It was I haven't finished it. I'm like well, halfway through, and I'm like, yeah, I don't it? know. Every story has a happy ending, depending on where you end the story. Exactly. I'm like, I'm gonna call this here. I think yeah. I'm. I don't think I'm gonna continue that one, but. Um, I liked it enough, but all of the others I read this month, I actually really, really loved. So nice. well, you, you read a lot. I did. I I'm was so, so proud of myself. I have, um, I actually physically read at least one of those, wow. which was pretty good for me. Yeah. Um, so it is my turn to pick yes. our next book. What are we reading? Ooh. It always happens to me that I get to pick the book we start reading in October. It's always, I did the math. Yeah. It's always going to be the same. I know. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out how to disrupt this. No, it's my pick. No, it's fine. It's I'm okay with it. It's always going right. to be. Yep. I'm okay with it. I know. It. I realized yeah, that. I, I was like, last time I picked a spooky novel. Yeah. You did fine, too. I thought I picked an October. No. When I you picked, picked September. September yeah. That we would discuss in yeah. October. Right. So yeah, we're going to okay. dis- we're gonna read it over the spooky season and discuss it in November. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know how spooky this is going to be, but I am picking a book I picked up from Timber like months ago and I put it on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. Um, called Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch. Ooh, <laughs> I love the title. By Rivka Galchin. Um, so the back of the novel says the story begins in 1618. The German in the German city of Württemberg. Um, the plague is spreading. The Thirty Years War has commenced. And fear and suspicion are in the air throughout the Holy Roman Empire. In the small town of Leonberg, Katharina Kempler is accused of being a witch. Katharina is an illiterate widow known by her neighbors for her, re- her herbal remedies and her successful children, including her oldest. Um, I don't know how you say that name. Yo, yo, how do you say that name? Johannes. Johannes, thank you. <laughs> who is the imperial mathematician and renowned author for the laws of planetary motion. It's enough to make anyone jealous, and Katharina has done herself no favors by being out and about and in everyone's business. So when the deranged and insipid Ursula Reinbold accuses Katharina of offering her a bitter witchy drink that made her ill, Katharina is in trouble, facing the threat of financial ruin, torture, and even execution. Drawing on, re- on real historical documents and infused with the intensity of imagination, sly humor, and an intellectual file fire for which Rivka Galchin is known, Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch, touchingly illuminates a society and a family undone by superstition, the state, and the moral convulsions of history. I picked it up because I really, really liked the cover. Yeah. Because that's how I, you sell it to me. I like the artwork. Um, yeah. There are actually two different versions of the cover. Both of them are pretty cool, but that's how I picked it. <laughs> um, and it sat on my shelf for a little while. This was going to be the book I took with me on my trip to Ireland, and I didn't end up putting it in my bag or maybe i did I'm i don't looking remember it upside down i didn't realize there's a cow yeah there's, there's a, cow a cow there and some like wolves or something i don't know some... oh yeah if you look in the negative space it's cool artwork yep so everyone knows your mother is a witch by rivka gauchin it is also available as an audiobook um so that is what we're going to read uh for next month so until then um we will see you in a couple weeks for our regular podcast episode 
let us know what you're reading. If you have any recommendations for us, we'd love to hear it. Um, or if you also have read any of the books that we've talked about, not even the most recent one, but you're like, hey, I went back and I read whatever. We would love to hear what you thought about it because there's still books that I'm still thinking about that we read a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you later. See you later. Bye, everybody. Be well. Strings Unraveled is a production of Strings and Things Studio with Anne Leckervin Cazzoli, Katie Von Rader Fraker, and Karen Wilmoth. Recorded and edited by Katie Von Rader Fraker. Find us online at stringsandthingsstudio.com or on Facebook or Instagram at stringsandthingsstudio. You can email us at stringsandthingsinfo at gmail.com. 